Hello, this is Elif from MaryQuestions.com. Today I prepared you a brand new PPD question to solve together. So let's dive in. A company is renovating a three-story office building to modernize its interior while staying within a strict budget. The current design includes semi-private work areas, energy-efficient lighting, and durable interior finishes. The company is looking for value engineering strategies to reduce costs without compromising long-term durability and functionality. Which of the following are appropriate cost-saving strategies? Check the three that apply. Option A. Replace glass partitions with solid walls in non-public workspaces. Option B. Reduce ceiling height across all floors to decrease heating and cooling costs. Option C. Use luxury vinyl tile instead of natural stone flooring. Option D. Use terrazzo flooring instead of natural stone flooring. Option E. Optimize artificial lighting by reducing fixture density and increasing daylight use through interior planning. And option F, remove all acoustic treatments to cut down on material and labor costs. Please take your time, pause the video here if you'd like to give your answer, but I will continue with the correct options. Correct options are option A, option C, and option Let's highlight the important parts of the question. I really value highlighting the question. I think it's very important. So this is a renovation project. We know that it has a strict budget, so money is tight. The design goals are having semi-private work areas, energy efficient lighting, and durable interior finishes. But the key part that's going to help us the, find the correct options is in the end. It says reduce cost without compromising long-term durability and functionality. So we are trying to cut the cost, but we cannot compromise on long-term durability and functionality. Now let's analyze options with this perspective. Option A says replace glass partition with solid walls in non-public workspaces. This is a correct option because solid walls do the same job as glass partitions and are cheaper. So you can maintain privacy and have the same function but you pay less. So this meets the key parts of the question and it cuts the cost down. Option B says reduce ceiling height across all floors to decrease heating and cooling costs. Why not? This sounds like good, right? But lowering the ceiling with structural modification would be costly. Even though you use the drop ceiling to reduce the ceiling height, you need to readjust the HVAC, the lighting, the sprinkler system, which means extra cost. Option C says use luxury vinyl tile, which is also known as LVT, instead of natural stone flooring. So LVT is an equally durable but much cheaper option. It's also low maintenance and a great alternative to cut the costs. Option D is very similar to option C. Instead of LVT, here it says use terrazzo flooring. Terrazzo flooring would be beautiful, but it is one of the most expensive options, so it does not meet the key points of the question, which was cutting the costs. Option E says, optimize artificial lighting by reducing fixture density and increasing daylight use through interior planning. Improving daylight use can be achieved through planning by reconfiguring workstations, using reflective surfaces, and incorporating light-colored materials to enhance daylighting penetration are some options. So when you do that, you would also not need artificial lighting as you did before. So you would also reduce the fixture density, which would further cut the cost, right? So I love this option because it is very smart and it wants you to be an architect and design smartly. And option F is remove all acoustic treatments to cut down on material and labor costs. This sounds good, right? But why not? I think poor acoustics here would lead workplace dissatisfaction and decreased productivity. Removing treatments entirely would create long-term functional issues. Remember the key part of the question? It said, keep it functional, keep it durable, but cut the costs. So option F would reduce the functionality of the space. Now that the question is done, I would like to share some test-taking tips. So if there are two options for the same work, pick one. Options C and D are basically the same work, but they are two different materials, right? Here, you cannot have C and D as part of your correct answer combination of options. So pick one if you ever see this in your questions. 
The other tip I would like to share is read carefully. Let's look at this option B and E here. Option B is recommending a structural change. And when you look at the option E first, it also sounds like a structural change because it says increase daylight use. How can you increase daylight? You can think that, oh, I'm going to open more windows, right? Invite more daylight in. But when you read the option carefully, it says through interior planning. So it doesn't actually recommend you to do a structural change. It wants you to have a smarter interior planning. So at first glance, option B and E both look like recommending some structural change, but in reality, one of them is not a structural change. So you need to read carefully. Lastly, I would recommend you to avoid options with certain judgments like always, all, must. As you see in option F, it says remove all acoustic treatments. I don't like that because it is a black or white scenario, right? In real life, in real design, in architectural design, things are usually not that black and white. They fluctuate in the gray zone a lot of times. So if an option is a very definitive judgment like this one, I would suggest you to refrain from including that option as part of your correct answers combination. So 80% of the time, it is a good idea to avoid this type of options. I hope this was helpful. I wish you the best of luck with your studies and exams. Please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have your support. And until I prepare a new question for you, have a great day. Bye-bye.